What's up everybody? That we're Hunter here. And today I have two really good deck lists. One is just for I guess like a, a fun deck. You know, the other one is uh Prank Kids. Uh with Prank Kids I took that to locals last week. And I went one for one. You know, it's not the best one yet, but it's getting up there. Uh the weird thing with that is it's only Monsters and Spells, which I think is a little weird, considering that most of the decks I've grown up with and, like, played all have traps in them. But I think we're going to start with that one, and then go to the fun deck. I might start a thing where every week I drop a fun deck. And then at the end of the video, I recently brought up last week that I was buying some Yu-Gi-Oh cards from the owner of the card shop. And my buddies and I went through them yesterday and we found a lot of gems. So at the end of the video, I will show you all those cards or at least the ones that are in like really good condition. So we are going to start with the Prank Kids deck list first. Uh, so I said there was no, that there are no traps in this deck but I do have 10 hand traps, which kind of help out, you know, like it shuts down your opponent immediately. And from what I played, it's really, really good. Uh, I just need a few more cards. I was going to wait to do this deck list till I got the rest of the cards in the mail, but it's been like three weeks and they're not here yet, but I really had to show you guys this deck list. So we're going to run with two, or sorry, three dropsies. Three Roxies, three Fancies, and three Lampsies. Um, I've seen a uh, multiple deck lists that they run two Roxies instead of three Roxies. I tried that for a little bit, but I ran out of prank kids because when your opponent hits MST or uh, Hybrid Fairy Duster on uh pranks it just it kind of ruins your plan of recycling your cards so i ran i'm, I'm going to go with three roxies and then i'm going to go with three effect violers two moonlit chills three ash blossoms one ghost spell and one drool and lockbird uh, so I recently bought two more ghost spells in the mail, but they, I got the wrong cards. So I should be running three ghost spells, but I don't know. I haven't really tried it with Drone Lockbird yet. The effect on that sounds really good. So if that does pretty well next week at Locals, I might just continue with that. I mean, there's a lot of different cards you can put in here. They'll make it better or worse. But <clears throat> as of right now, I really enjoy playing it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go with one Dino Wrestler. Dino Wrestler has the effect of uh, Cyber Dragon. So it's a really like nice card to bring out in the field. Uh, now we're going to go to the spells. And the rest of this is spells. So I run three Prank Kids Place. And then I run three polys. And then one pandemonium. Uh, the reason why I go one pandemonium is because it has the same effect as poly. And growing up, I never read the effect of poly. It can be from hand, field, to bring out a monster. I, like growing up, I just thought it was field. So that's a huge game changer. And then with the Prank Kids Pandemonium, it really does the same thing from hand or field. And since there's only Prank Kids in my extra deck, I don't find a use for any more Pandemoniums. Um, so I'm going to be going with two Pranks. Like I said, uh, my only problem I had last week was 
once my opponent got off pranks, like got, got pranks out the field, I couldn't do anything else. Uh, I just recently put the other one in, but I do feel like if someone MSTs one pranks, then I will easily just bring out another pranks, you know. It's not like a win-lose situation, but it really messed up my strategy on what I was doing. Also going with the Monster Reborn, it honestly helps a lot because you can bring back out Dino Wrestler or bring back out, you know, more prank kids than Fusion and uh, other cards, you know. Gonna go with one Called by the Grave, two Twin Twisters, one Instant Fusion. Uh, so with this card, I was having doubts on playing it. But my first deck, or my, my first duel, the one I lost, I uh, was able to bring out Rocket. And Rocket really helped it because then, you know, I could fusion into more stuff. And it really made the deck start going a lot. Going one, one for one. Uh, this is just to bring out one of the prank kids, uh, Fancies. That way you have more material, more, sorry, more material to work with. Uh, I go with one triple tactics and then one lightning storm. Cool thing with lightning storm is I forgot what fusion it is, but you can use this effect to get rid of like all your monsters and then you can combo it with this, which is really, really fun and easy. All right, then I'm gonna be going on to the fusions. Fusions and links. All right. So I'm gonna go with one Battle Butler, one Meow Meow. So I think Meow Meow is limited. I go two Doo Doo Doodle Doos. Two Bow Wow Barks, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Roaring Rooster, one Totally Awesome, one Anaconda, one Burl Sword Dragon, two Rockets, and then one Weather Washer. Uh, so my first game I played... I didn't know what I was doing, but I found out how to bring out Butler. And of course, my first game I, I was playing was against Heroes. So Butler destroyed his whole plan, which was amazing. Uh, one thing that's really cool with Prank Kids, uh, I'm, I'm going like off topic, but every time that say like you use Lampsies as... Link Fusion. Well then, your opponent takes 500 damage of direct points. Uh, if you go with Dropsies and use that for Link Summoning, then you get 1,000 life points. So it's a lot of like recycling back and forth. <clears throat> Sorry. And that's why you need Pranks in there. Because you can just keep on doing that, keep on burning your opponent, keep on attacking... And then keep on getting life points higher. It's really, really fun. I have no complaints yet. This is a deck I've been wanting to make for a while. Uh, I'm really happy it got reprinted. But now everybody is going to be wanting to play it. And there is a way you can put Dragoon in this deck. I'm really thinking about doing it. But I feel like it will just take the fun out of the deck. Because every other deck is playing Dragoon. And I'm not a huge fan of Dragoon, but, you know, it's a possibility. Alright, so we're going to go on to the fun deck. Uh, so, I made this deck around Victory Dragon. Like I was saying in the last video, uh, I've never had Victory Dragon. And growing up, I wanted the, like, the card really bad. Uh, so then... I was looking through the cards, and Victory Dragon was damaged, unfortunately. But 
I was like, okay, I'll put it in a fun deck then. And then you'll also see other cards in here that is the OG art, but I have multiple copies of them. So once I get done with this deck, if, if I take it apart, because if I like it, I'll probably just keep it, honestly. But once this deck is done, I'm going to probably be putting these in the binders with the rest of that said card. So we're going to be going with one Obnoxious Cultic Guardian, one Decoy Dragon. I'm not going to butcher that name, so I'll just let you read it. One Mirage Dragon, one Spear Dragon, one Draw Guard, one Hundred Dragon, which honestly looks like Baby Dragon. I mean, just like an older, older version. Uh, one Al Alexandrite Dragon, one Luster Dragon. One Axe Dragon. I'm not going to butcher that name either. I don't know how to pronounce it, honestly. One White Horn Dragon. One, Vic one Victory Dragon. As you can see, there is water damage, which really, really sucks. But, I mean, I might just keep playing it then. I think the card's going for like $3. But damage is worth nothing, unfortunately. One Dark Magician to Chaos. This is where, you know, growing up, my decks never really had consistency. And so I'm really just going with that, you know. I have a bunch of low star cards. And I am yet to try this deck out. But I'm sure it's going to work out great. Uh, I went to Locals last week and we did have a, you know, a fun deck tournament going on. And I was playing Magicians, and I went, like, 5-1. and one. It was just really fun to not worry about Lynx or Synchros or even Dragoon. I mean, it's just it was just an all-around really fun time. But now we're going to start going into Blue Eyes White Dragon, Dark Magician, and Red Eyes. Uh, yeah, these were all... In one of the decks, these three cards were. And I was able to pick those decks up. We all had a... I think there was like nine decks we were picking from. And uh, we were all doing it blind. And I fortunately got all three of these in one deck. So that was huge. I mean, I was really excited because like I said, I have some that are already in a binder, but I don't want to take those out and ruin them. So I was like, you know, since these are already played with, I'll just continue playing with these. And they're all in mint condition. So maybe I'll just get some damage one damage ones on TCG or on Amazon and then just go from there, you know? I'm really liking how this deck is looking. Uh it's mostly dragons, as you can tell, because Victory Dragon is the card I want mostly on the field, but there are some other combos you can do to make sure that if they mess up that strategy getting Victory Dragon on the field, you always have more options. And that's the, the biggest thing with these fun decks, in my opinion, is you should always have more than one idea or one strategy. That way if they mess it up, you know, you can always go have like a backup plan. Like if they get rid of Victory Dragon, you still have Red Eyes. If they get rid of Red Eyes, you still have Dark Mission, so on with Blue Eyes. It's just, I don't know, with these fun decks, they're really starting to, you know, be fun, you know. Uh, I run one Dark Hole, one Brain Control, one Regeki, one MST, one Rush Recklessly, one mask to spell. So I wasn't going to put this card in there because, you know, why would I, you know? But with the fun decks, everyone I play, they play uh, Swords of Revealing Light. 
my idea is a way to get swords into my, like, so it benefits me more than them, is play a massive spell. They take 500 life points until their car is off the field. That is crazy. So, uh, that's also a reason why I put the Magician of Chaos in there. Because when I end my turn, I can go back and get Max's spell. I think it's once per turn. but Or just once when he's on the field. But that's still huge. I mean, it'll make my opponent think twice before playing another Swords. Play one pot of Duality. One pot of Greed. Two Monster Reborns. Put two in here for because of Magician to Chaos and because of the three up here. Two Ancient Rules. Put two in there again for these three up here. I really didn't have an idea on how I was going to make this deck, but I really wanted these three cards in here. The three old school boss monsters mostly because it really brings the fun you know most people haven't seen these three cards in a while so i feel like when i play it next week it's gonna bring out a lot of nostalgic feelings and i mean that's another fun part of Yu-Gi-Oh. if you haven't seen a card in a while and out of nowhere you're like oh hey you know haven't seen that card since i was little it really helps the mood, you know. Gonna go with three swords, two stray lambs, three mirror forces, one medic cylinder, two wire taps, one bottomless trap hole, and <clears throat> sorry again. <clears throat> and the last card I'm going to be running is Scrap Iron Scarecrow. I actually, the reason why I lost one of the games last week was because I forfeit. Uh, the guy had two Scrap Iron Scarecrows. So there was really no way I could win because I didn't have, you know, any back support. Like there was no way I could, you know, do Harpies or MST and it really sucked because I really wanted to win that game. But I didn't really have a choice because I didn't have anything to hit Scrap Iron. But it was it was really fun all around. It was really fun to see what the other people could make that were OG or even like fun, you know. Uh, there's another, or there's one guy that's gonna be playing Heroes next week that he's gonna make into a fun deck. I'm not the biggest fan of Heroes, but by all means, if he can make the deck fun, why not, you know? And now, I'm gonna be showing you some of the cards that I was able to get. Some of the gems, I should say. Because he had, I don't know, he had like two binders, three boxes, a tin. A suitcase he had a lot of stuff so I was able to get the blue eyes white dragon and as you can see it's from the jump so I believe it's from the magazine but that art alone is crazy I really really like the art uh, flame swordsman the alternative art I thought was really cool I've honestly never seen this art before so I knew when I seen it, I had to have it. I was able to get my hands on some uh, Japanese cards too. Like that one. I really like how it's different art from this one to the English one. I'll show you here in a second. It's a really big difference. I mean, from the English one, it doesn't have the pentagram. And then this one has a pentagram. Super, super cool. I mean, I really, really enjoyed buying the box blind and seeing what all I could, like, what all I could get. Go for the lightning. 
And this is honestly in really good condition. I've been thinking about getting most of these graded. Exodia Netcross. This car was honestly a sleeper. Uh, it was in the binder for a while. And then towards the end, I just picked it up. And I think it's going for like $40 right now. So it was a great pull. So this next one, I'm going to actually take it out of the sleeve. So you could honestly see just how mint this card is. I'm going to turn it around so that no one can see it. Well, of course, if you follow my Instagram, you've already seen it. But So first, we're going to look at the back. The back is crazy cool. I mean, there's like no scratches. It's ridiculous. But it's the Dark Paladin. And this is honestly the only card that caught my eye in there. I bought one a little while back and it was, it's damaged, it's horrible, but it was nice to have it. But now that I have a mint condition one, I really want to get it graded because I feel like it could be at least a seven. And then Dark Magician, but I know what you're thinking, you know, it's a regular art, you know, it's not really expensive. But it's the LOB. I haven't seen this card. I mean, I'm pretty sure that my first Dark Magician was the LOB back when I was in kindergarten. But this one is going in my binder for sure. I really like the artwork on this. And it's probably my, my favorite art. And then lastly, I also got a... Foreign Dark Magician, which is really, really cool. Uh, I've never really been interested into the, I think that's Japanese, into the Japanese cards. But once I've seen them, it just opens up. It's kind of like reading a manga, you know, like there's no like violence in the anime for English. But as soon as you open up the manga, it's it gets dark, you know. I should probably take that out so you guys can see it's not damaged at all. Super, super cool art. Well, that's going to end it for today. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. I'm getting over a cold. But yeah, if you guys liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And subscribe and thank you so much for watching i'll see you next week with another kids or er, another fun deck have a great day